Thanks for that information, Lindsay. Now that we know the structure and mechanisms of the enzyme, let's talk a little bit about what can happen when there are mutations or deficiencies. Obviously, a mutation will change the structure and therefore the function of the enzyme. So for a quick re recap, succinate dehydrogenase, or SDH, is an oxyreductase, oxidation of succinate to fumarate and reduction of ubiquinone to ubiquinol in the respiratory chain. If there is a homozygous mutation, meaning that both sets of the alleles are affected, such as a deletion of subunit B, C, or D, it will be lethal in the embryo and terminate the pregnancy. However, if the deletion is on subunit A, uh, there will be a birth and it will result in juvenile subacute necrotizing encephalomyelopathy, which is also known as Lee's syndrome. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later, just because it's uh, very interesting. But let's talk about heterozygous mutations. That means that only one set of the alleles have the mutation, and that will often result in a high lifetime penetrance autosomal dominant tumor syndrome. Both the sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia are usually affected, resulting in malignant tumors. So let's jump back to Lee syndrome. Um, it is a genetic disorder which is maternally inherited. It's a point mutation that changes a thymine to a guanine on nucleotide 8993. It's relatively rare, typically only occurring in 1 in 40,000 births. However, the symptoms start presenting at a very young age, usually between three months and two years, and can range from stomach issues like diarrhea and vomiting to seizures, and will eventually start affecting the muscle systems, resulting in low muscle tone, involuntary muscle contraction, and lack of coordination. The muscles of the eyes are especially vulnerable, and there are often vision disorders associated with Lee syndrome. The most common sources of death are from the thickening of the heart muscle, which is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and respiratory, respiratory failure. About 20 to 25 percent of Lee syndrome cases are due to the mu a mutation of the mitochondrial DNA, which is directly where su succinate dehydrogenase is. Um, this results in a disorder of the oxidative phosphorylation cycle, which is the cell's main source of ATP. It can either be from the malform protein or an error in the assembly of complex 2, uh, but essentially what will happen, because the cell is not getting as much energy or ATP as it needs, is that um, there will be chron cr excuse me, chronic lack of energy resulting in cell death. This will start affecting the central nervous system, um, especially the brain, cell and basal, brain stem and basal ganglia, and the brain will essentially have trouble communicating with and coordinating with the muscles. As of right now, there is no effective treatment for Lee syndrome, but there are treatments for the sim symptoms. A diet high in fat and low in carbohydrates can reduce seizure activity. Taking supplements can assist in normal body functions. Um, Lactic acidosis is a common symptom. Uh, you can take sodium bicarbonate or sodium citrate for that. There are, there, they are currently running clinical trials for a drug called EPI-743. There's not much information on what exactly the method of action that will, it'll take. Um, and like with any drug trial, it's currently years from coming to the market. Now, while Lee syndrome is pretty rare uh, and the only non-lethal homozygous present presentation of the mutation. Um, here are a few other diseases that are commonly associated with heterozygous mutations. Um, as you can see, they're from subunits B, C, and D. They often result in tumors or in the head and neck area and the, the ganglia. Um, as you can also see on the last bullet point there, there's optic atrophy uh, in the elderly. As I noted earlier, the eyes are um, very susceptible to having muscle loss from this disease. Um, treatments. Unfortunately, just like with Lee syndrome, there aren't many treatments. You can take dietary supplements, remove the tumors, uh, treat lac lactic acidosis, but the best way to prevent any of these disorders um, would be to get genetic testing to see if the mother is a carrier for the mutated gene. 
Before wrapping up, let's discuss another unknown topic about the enzyme, the heme B group. Let me just jump to the next slide. Uh, as you can see here, it's in the membrane portion of the enzyme, but it's not exactly clear what the function is of this group. Um, some researchers created a mutant enzyme that could not bind with heme B. The mutant enzyme had about a 6 to 30 percent reduction in activity, but they deduced that even though it was lower functioning, it demonstrated that the heme group was not required for the chemical reactions. They also observed that the mutant types were less stable than the wild types, indicating that the heme B could have more of a stabilizing effect on the overall structure as opposed to a functional effect. Well, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you found the presentation informative. Thank you again for your time, and have a wonderful day.